Oh, hold on. Press the button. That's on me. Okay, that's the wrong button. There we go. What's up, people? For those of you that don't know me, my name is Trenton Steele. Trenton Steele. Yeah, gotta get better with that. Um, also known as Father Diff, I am a photographer and a videographer, and this is what I love to do, and this is what I do. So today, I kind of want to go over the light setup that I have for my studio, and this is mainly the setup that I use for portraits. That's mainly what I do in here, portraits and headshots, and I'm going to go over a few things as to the brands that I use, the light setup, how I use them. So we're going to jump right into it. We're not going to waste any time because I don't want to keep you out here all day. Y'all got stuff to do. All right. So the number one, I use two lights. All right. Two. I use a continuous light and a strobe light. Okay. Now the continuous light that I use is this one right here. It is the Aperture 300D. Okay. That is a very bright light. It's one of my favorite lights. With that one being a continuous light, that means it continuously puts out light. It's nonstop. So that's pretty much when you're taking pictures, it's what you see is what you get. Because you can see what the picture's gonna look like because that light is already there. Now, the second light that I use is a strobe light. A strobe light is basically like a flash, pretty much. It's gonna emit a big burst of light and it's gonna do it real quick and that's normally placed right here that's this one the current light that i'm using right here for this video that is the aperture 120d that's just strictly for the video but for pictures i use this same dome this light dome right here i use the same thing it's sitting in the same spot that i use so this is kind of a pretty much a clear example of how i shoot i always have one here and one here. Basically to explain that, this big one right here is your key light. Your key light is basically your main source of light. It's gonna pretty much fill up all of the subject. And then you're gonna have shadows left. So those shadows is where the fill light comes in. That's why they call it a fill, because it fills in the spot that the main light can't get. So because of that being a fill light, it doesn't interrupt this light at all. You know, this is just to get in the shadows. And to give you an example of that, once I turn this off, you should see a bit of a difference. So like this side right here should be a little bit darker. I should have a shadow maybe right here. But once I turn it back on, it kind of fills it in a little bit. So that's the purpose of a fill light. I have them both sitting on a C-stand. That's pretty much what they're placed on. I love my C-stands. They give me a little bit of more mobility as far as how to move them. Um, sometimes it's not the easiest, but again, I love them. I try to keep them one on the one on the left, one on the right. There's multiple ways to do this. This is not a standard. This is not the way to do it, you know, by default, but it's what I do. And to go back to the strobe light that I use, I use a Godox AD400 Pro. Um, like I said, this is where it's gonna fill in the shadows and it's basically like a flash. It's just gonna, and just shine all that into that area that's mainly your shadows. So if we were to just turn off that one, it's gonna be like a real quick burst. Kind of like that. This step is gonna be way faster. Another thing that I wanna go over is the light domes that I'm using for the strobe light and the continuous light is this one is the aperture dome which i guess is a regular one it's a real big one and then this is the aperture dome mini 2 the second version also on this one the strobe light i have a grid and what the grid does is it keeps the light from flaring all the way out so they basically just help point them or shoot them in a different direction so that it doesn't flare out as much um it's basically just a grid. So if I take it off, you know, as you can see, it's just a bunch of square, a bunch of square grids. And they just help direct the light. I like the Godox. Pretty sure you're probably wondering, well, why is he shooting with a continuous and a strobe? Well, I had intentions of only doing video and I had intentions of using only my continuous lights for my pictures, but I kind of found that a strobe light 
works a little bit better because it can get brighter than that. Granted, this can get pretty, pretty, pretty bright, but it was just something about that strobe that gave it more of a different look, a more professional look that I liked, that I just kind of felt I wanted. And the Godox was fairly cheap. I want to say it was, I honestly don't remember. I'm gonna put up in the video. It shouldn't be that much, but I'm gonna put it right here. Yeah, it was that much. So that's not too bad considering what it does. I like it. Um, I don't have any complaints about it. I'm still trying to figure it out because strobe light is kind of new to me. Ain't no counter to it. It is new to me. Before me buying it, I only shot with it once. But these pictures right here are what I've been playing around with lately. And I just love the way they look. Um, the camera setup is pretty much the same. If you're looking at the picture on the right is going to be the key light on the left is going to be the fill light. That's if you're looking at the picture and that's the way they were, the way the, way the lights were set up. The cameras that I use are the Canon 5D Mark IV and the Canon 1DX Mark II. I rarely shoot studio photography with my 5D um, simply because I really, really love my 1DX. It's just something about it. So I'm going to use the 35 for maybe waist up. But for the headshot, it's going to be strictly the 85 millimeter. Um, I just love the way that looks. Sometimes I may try to do it with my 100 macro, but it's not always going to work because I don't have a lot of space in this studio. This is one that I made by myself on a $200 budget, you know, so if you want to check that out, you're more than welcome to watch that. Yeah, I just wanted to go over that. And you don't have to have an expensive light. I promise you, you don't. I was doing this before, maybe $40 lights off of Amazon. I don't remember how much it was, but it was definitely under $100 for one light. So you can buy a couple of those offline and then set them up and do the same thing. And it doesn't have to be a strobe light either. It doesn't. It can simply be another continuous light. But if you want to play around with the strobes, that's fine. You know, I may end up switching to strobe lights only, but I'm not that comfortable with it yet. So until then, I'm going to continue to use the setup. And I've noticed that my pictures, they look a little bit, look a lot better in my opinion. I love the way they look. It gives me that professional look, which I'm aiming for, the editorial look that I'm aiming for. And I love that. Um, like I said, I just wanted this to be kind of quick, you know, nothing detail to the point to the T where I'm going over specs and everything I just wanted to show you my light setup show you the results and show you the placement like always I really really appreciate you guys support I appreciate you guys for watching and if you enjoyed this subscribe really do appreciate that and I will see you guys pretty soon so until then I am out